you uh, give us your full name and age? Yes, James Frederick Washbrook, and I was born in 1927. First, I was born in Brunswick, and we shifted to Pasco Vale, and uh, I, I finished up at Preston Tech. Not James to me, he's dead. One of the things I, f I, f I think with my dad, he's a survivor, he goes on. And I think his painting is a lot to do with that because he can um, sit down and he can paint. I was, I was hopeless at schoolwork, <laughs> except, uh, except at doing drawing. I used to like going down and, and, and uh, we'd go down and sketch down at the wharfs. And I used to sketch it. They used to have the older diner there that was rotten away. And a lot of all my, my drawings, are, I, I don't know where they are now, they're just gone. But I used to love doing that. And my bro brother had a lot of patience. He never done any of that. He, he used to just sit there with me and watch me. I wanted to be a cartoonist, you know, doing political cartoons. Because I used to, in the papers, there used to be a political cartoon in every paper, the Argus, which is you don't hear of now in the Herald and the Sun. At the time they had, they, you, you had Hitler and Mussolini and, and the Spanish war was on and everything. And they used to put these cartoons and I used to copy them, you know, copy the figures. And I, that's how I, 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 I won this competition in the uh, Preston Technical School. I could always remember he come down and he, he <laughs> He looked at what I, I, I done, I done a cartoon, and I put the Hitler and all these other <laughs> cartoon figures in it, and he said it, he, he just laughed. I thought to myself, well, there's, there's something, I, I, I might win this, but I didn't, I went there with no hope of winning anything. And the, 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 uh, the teacher told me, she said, he said that uh, you've got talent which uh, <laughs> surprised me, you know. In those days, I think he, he was one of two other brothers and, um, you know, he's had to work hard for everything he's got. He's from that era. I mean, I'm a little bit artistic, but not in the same way he is. I wish I would, could be able to, you know, to paint like he can. When you do an oil painting, it's like when you paint, a, say you're painting a house, you put a primer on it, then you put a, a, a coat, another coat on it, and two more coats on the top, and keep putting coats on it. But you must start with a primer. Oh yes, I buy a, a magazine, I buy, I buy the artist magazine, and uh, I see all the different types. That everybody's different. Uh, painting's just like a handwriting, you know. Nobody's all the same. If you do try to copy somebody, you, think you can't copy somebody because they always do it better than what you do. You've got to be yourself. I like to do uh, paintings of trees and landscape more than I would uh, portraits because portraits is a very hard thing to do. You've got to be perfectly with them. But I can do portraits. You've seen my portraits. Uh, but I, I'll do anything. I can paint anything. Me and Mum were probably, you know, if we didn't like something, we'd tell him. Because I remember once, because he, he used, to, he does a lot of paintings from from his photos, because he likes photography too. He's he was into photography. At one stage, he was going to a um, photography club, and he quite enjoyed that. And um, he <laughs> he took a photo, and I think the flash went off in it or something, and he put that in the painting. I went, what the? Me and Mum went, what are you doing? Because <laughs> he did it exactly without thinking about it and there was this picture of this like this flash <laughs> and then he had to fix it up afterwards. Can you tell us on where you find some of your ideas to paint? Oh, I, I just look at look around, I look at photographs, I look at something in a magazine and I think to myself well I'll take that out of a magazine and I'll put it together and make a painting out of it. And uh, sometimes it, it's a failure, if it's a failure we'll with oils, you can either scrape it off and paint something else on it. When I had my my piano, he did um, a still life of, of some flowers, and that went that went beautifully with my piano. So I really like that. He's done a, a, a painting 
the painting over there he's done he's put you in he's put you in it and he's put um Ernest my husband and me and Leisha when she was younger in it I like that one I know there's a few paintings I like I like the beach ones I like the the beach ones the ones of um Roy were really nice when you're painting how long does it generally take for you to finish a piece? it all depends on what you're painting if you're painting a big one, you've got to put more detail in it. But if you're painting just smaller ones, you can just suggest things that's in the, in the painting, you know. If you want figures, you don't. To, you just put dots and, and lines and it looks... But when you walk away, if oil painting, you've got to watch it walk back to know what the painting's all about. It's when you look back. You don't do it straight up, but if people are used to taking photographs and they're looking at photographs close up and they all you, they always go up close to a painting and I always tell them you don't look at oil paintings close up you've got to go say two paces or more back to understand and see what those little dots seem to represent something when you walk back. He did a really old fashioned vintage cars and he did every, you could see every spoke, like the detail in it was really brilliant, but he hated doing them because he said that it was a bit hard on the eyes for him to get, to do everything. Because everyone that saw those said, oh, you know how wonderful they were. He's always got something to learn. I think every artist I, I know or read about, they say, well, we still got, we're still learning. We never stop learning, which is quite true. Even if you speak to Dad, he says that he's always learning. Even at the age he is now, he's, he's always learning. I remember when he first was, he's, if you look at his early paintings, he put a lot of green in his trees, you know? And, and as he's got older, he's, he's, he's changed the color of them. So, you know, he's, the palette's changed and, and the colors that he does are different. So do you think Rosebud, how has it influenced your painting? So what have you painted? Um, oh, you've got more solitude than I, I, I had, you know, especially now I'm on my own. I've, it uh, keeps me busy. He's pretty isolated where he lives. He's by himself, like he, and I would like him ideally to come down here. And he basically said to me, well, if it wasn't for the fact that he's, he does his paintings, he probably would go. It's good to, for everybody to have a hobby, this is his thing. when when you retire or, or you, you buy yourself, it's good to have something. And that's the thing, he just, he loses himself in his paintings. It's a way of he, him expressing himself. Margaret Ollie died just recently. You remember Margaret Ollie? She couldn't go out, she got too old. And she was an artist, well famous artist. And so she painted everything in the kitchen. And she kept on rearranging everything in the kitchen. She, and she died. I would say holding a brush. <laughs> Child would like to do the same thing at Rosebud. Well, how do you think he, he's moulded who you are today? Well, I suppose um, he's introduced me to the world of art. You know, he's, I suppose, you sort of learn patience and tolerance through him. It's, it's given me some interest in life. I think if anybody that's got no interest or anything, I think they've got a dead life. If you think you want to do something, do it. Even if you fail, at least you've tried. And that's what I do. I try. <laughs>